Welcome to the third lecture of week 4 of the course Unit Operations of Particulate Matter. In this third lecture, we will discuss transportation of solids. And as far as this topic is concerned, this topic I will cover in three different lecture, lecture 3, lecture 4 and lecture 5 of this week. In lecture 3, we will discuss what is transportation of solid, why it is important and uh, how it is done, what are the measures, what are the uh, equipment which are involved in this and then we will discuss mechanical conveyors and uh, few mechanical conveyors I will cover in lecture 3 and few mechanical conveyors I will cover in lecture 4 and in lecture 5 I will speak about non-mechanical conveyors that is pneumatic as well as hydraulic transport. So, let us start lecture 3 with transportation of solids. Now, as far as transportation of solid is concerned, uh, where it is used, uh, if you have seen even around you when any construction is going on or even if uh, in your houses also, we need to transport, we need to carry solid from one place and dump it to another place. So, that is uh, as far as industry is concerned, the transportation of solid is very difficult in comparison to transportation of fluids. And transportation of particulate solid is an integral part of most of the process industries and it is difficult in comparison to transferring the uh, liquid as well as air. So, to transport the solid from one place to another place, specific equipment are designed for this purpose as the equipment involved in uh, uh, fluid transport cannot be used over here. So, the selection of these equipment depends on the capacity requirement, material characteristics and whether the solid are to be transported horizontally, vertically or an incline and whether the and whether the solids are to be transported horizontally vertically or on an incline so you see here we have to uh, transport the solid for different uh, position for different height uh, so for that purpose specific equipment are to be designed now we will discuss transport of solids which is in plant transport means if in an industry what are the measures, what are the ways to transport solid from one place to another place. For transportation within a chemical plant, the simplest method should be to utilize unassisted manpower that is to carry the load on one's own shoulders. So, that is the easiest way to carry the solid from one place to another place even uh, that when uh, any construction work is going on nearby, we have seen this that um, unassisted manpower it means labor himself or uh, uh, it means labor, labor himself carries the solid on its uh, uh, hold on its shoulder and then dump it to another place. So, that is very common that very commonly we have seen in all places, but obviously it can be used for very short distance. On the other hand assisted manpower utilizing hand truck, trolleys etc which is recommended for transport the solid within the range of 40 to 70 meter. So, that is uh, more than unassisted manpower. This is applied for lifting loads weighing more than 50 to 75 kg as well. So, here you see mass which is carried out by assisted manpower as well as distance till which this can be used that is specific. So, when we have to use uh, when we have to transport for larger distance this then this because up to 70 meter that is very less as far as big plants are concerned even in a smaller plant also 70 meter distance is less. So, we have to see other uh, options to carry the solid from one place to another place. So, for longer distance than this we can use portable power driven machines which has larger capacity in comparison to hand trucks and trolleys and these power driven machines are electric truck that is general purpose truck with fixed platform and lift platform. I hope you understand the fixed platform as well as lift platform, lift platform dump the material automatically. 
special type trucks that is crane truck, dump body truck, etc. They can run continuously for a period ranging from 8 to 24 hours. So, in many plant if you see this type of uh, truck uh, uh, are uh, commonly used to take the solid from one place to another place. Along with this we can use power shovels. Now, power shovels is uh, the equipment is the machine that take the material, take the solid from one place, but it cannot carry it towards another place. To carry this we need um, the, we need trucks so that it can carry the material, dump it on a truck trolley and uh, truck trolley takes it from one place to another place. So, I hope you understand what is power shovels that you can see in this uh, figure in this image. Details are given in this web link. So, here we have as far as this power shovel is concerned, we need truck or commercial truck uh, for uh, carrying the material, but it is very effectively remove the material from one place. So, as far as uh, operation is concerned, you see this is a specific kind of machine and to run this machine skilled persons are required. So, these are expensive and uh, recommended only when large quantities of bulk material are being handled at changing position. If we need to uh, take the very large material, for example, uh, if we, that you have seen for construction purpose when we uh, when we dig the foundation that is very large area it uh, uh, covers where it can remove the solid from very large area in very less time, but it cannot carry on its own. So, uh, the commercial trucks are provided with this. Now, all these uh, equipment which we all these uh, all these assisted power assisted manpower or portable truck or power shovels whatever we have discussed it has the limitation that it cannot move longer distances. So, for large so for long distance transport of large tonnages of solid bulk transport by rail road or by ship if location are conveniently connected by waterway, if two places are connected by are nicely connected by waterway then we can use ship. So, for longer distance rail, road and ships are used to transport the material. For very large distance like uh, when we consider more than 600 or 1000 kilometer rail or road transport become uneconomical. So, in this case we have to find other way to transport and these ways are hydraulic as well as pneumatic transport. We will discuss about this hydraulic and pneumatic transport in fifth lecture of this week. And now, we will discuss the mechanical conveyors which are uh, used uh, extensively as far as uh, uh, industries are concerned. So, these mechanical conveyor, why we call it mechanical conveyor? Because it reuse some means like uh, it, it will be driven by drive or uh, it will be materially spooled by some uh, uh, mechanism. So, all in all these cases mechanical uh, part is involved and therefore it is called as and therefore it is called as mechanical conveyors. So, conveyor either carry solids on them or drag them through a channel or trough and are used both for short as well as long distances operated either intermittently or continuously. Therefore, as far as this mechanical conveyor is concerned, it can be used for larger distances as well as smaller distances and uh, when we have to take the material in between, for example, when uh, conveyors are uh, made uh, for longer distances and in between we have to take the material that can be very, that can be done very easily with this uh, mechanical conveyors. And when we use the conveyor for lifting the material from one place to another place, we basically call this as elevators. So, as we have discussed that mechanical conveyors are used for uh, shorter distance as well as longer distance. It has the uh, capacity uh, carrying capacity also which is significantly higher in comparison to in comparison to the 
assisted manpower or portable truck and etc what we have discussed previously so for transporting solid at the rate of 12500 to 60000 kg per hour within 10 to 20 km distance so you can see capacity carrying capacity is very high as well as distance it covers is around 20 km which is huge and uh, it is also um, suitable for uh, very large plants so up to 20 km mechanical conveyors have been found to be more economical than transport by rail or road vehicle so when we have to go for uh, uh, 10 to 20 km uh, instead of moving that with rail and uh, by road that is very uh, expensive we can use less expensive way and that is the mechanical conveyors now different types of mechanical conveyors are you see here we have different types of mechanical conveyor first is the screw conveyor then we have the flight conveyors and next we have belt conveyors apron conveyors and bucket conveyors so these are different types of mechanical conveyors we will discuss uh, some of this subsequently we will discuss some of these subsequently now when we speak about screw as well as flight conveyor these are basically called as scrappers because it uh, uh, carry it drag the material from one place to another place and there, therefore it is called as scrapper however when we consider belt conveyor apron conveyor or bucket conveyor they carry material on itself and then uh, they move so material will be transported while uh, staying on the uh, conveyor however in scrapper material itself move along with the however in scrapper material move not the conveyor so that is the difference between scrapper and uh, uh, other conveyor so therefore we call belt conveyor apron conveyor and bucket conveyor as the carriers because they carry on itself and then they move however scrapper they Uh, remain itself they remain uh, at uh, static position or they revolve on its own position and material uh, move from one place to another place so therefore uh, so that is the basic difference between scrapper as well as carriers now as for a selection of uh, different conveyor for different purpose is concerned that depends on capacity required how much we have to transport distance of the travel how long we have to transport shape and size of the material uh, like if they are very uh, spherical type or they are very uh, movable type shape is there so we have to uh, move or we have to uh, use the conveyor accordingly material character material characteristics it means whether the material is sticky whether it is abrasive whether it is granular type what is uh, the characteristic on which selection of uh, equipment or conveyor depends whether solids are transported vertically horizontally or an incline yes that is very important factor whether we have to transport on same plane or in an incline or directly towards uh, upper side or vertically so depending upon these uh, different uh, uh, conditions these different factors the selection of conveyor will be done so here we will start discussion on screw conveyor as we have discussed that some of the conveyor we will discuss in detail so let's start with the screw conveyor now if you see this uh, animation what this animation shows that material is move from one place to another place through the movement of these screw and therefore it is called as screw conveyor so screw conveyors are widely used for transporting pulverized and granular solid such as grain asphalt crushed coal ashes gravel and sand to relatively shorter distance that is up to 40 meter horizontally or 30 meter vertically even they are used in uh, some inclination also so you see as far as uh, screw are concerned they basically drag material from one place to another place and uh, that we have already discussed and therefore it is called as scrappers so 
uh, as uh, screws drag uh, material from one place to another place that will become easier when we are uh, when we are handling the granular material or uh, uh, sand kind of material therefore this screw conveyors are not recommended for sticky material along with this abrasive materials are also less recommended to be conveyed through screw conveyors and screw conveyors are normally move horizontally or not normally transport the material in horizontal plane however slight inclination is also possible that is up to 20 degree vertical screw conveyors and screw pipes are used for a special purpose so usually we have inclination up to 20 degree and we use this uh, for shorter distances in the plant but for transporting granular material they are used extensively now in this slide if you see this diagram what is this this is showing a uh, image of uh, a screw conveyor now what happens in a screw conveyor if you see its uh, structure when we consider outer uh, shell of this that is nothing but the semi cylindrical shape so for a screw conveyor usually we use semi cylindrical bottom or uh, sometimes we also use a square uh, box for transportation for placing this screw now what happens inside this semi cylindrical bottom we have the shaft which is placed at the bottom section of this now you see here we have the connection of shaft and uh, it is placed inside this over this shaft screw are mounted you see these are the screws which are uh, mounted over the shaft so when we have to carry the material material will be dumped material will be put over here and that is uh, transported through uh, drag or uh, the so material you see material can be put over here and that can be transported through these screws towards the discharge end and discharge end will be like this where uh, if you see this um, if you can see this uh, the bottom of the bottom is the uh, here we have the open space and this uh, trough is uh, made uh, at the bottom of this opening so material is uh, material can be transported up to here material can be dumped over here easily so rotation of the material together with the screw is prevented by its own weight as well as the friction on the trough walls so when the when we put the material we should not uh, put the material put the large amount of material uh, at uh, one time because when the weight of material will be increased it will be difficult for these screws to carry the material therefore less material should be full should be kept over here because material weight is important over here uh, and uh, uh, the obstruction through this uh, wall because when some material is uh, uh, lying between these screw and wall so that can uh, make wear and tear inside this so material weight of material as well as friction through the wall is uh, the main obstruction for uh, rotation of these screw so material is unloaded at discharge and through opening provided with the gates so here you see here where uh, uh, for uh, where we have to drop the material dump the material we can put the gate over here now for example if uh, this is the total length of the screw if i have to drop the material over here so what we, we can do the bottom uh, sheet of this case the bottom sheet of this casing is having a, a gate over here at the bottom side the bottom surface of this uh, uh, casing should have gate over here and below this gate trough like uh, with, um, this uh, uh, trough which is like this that should be placed over here and uh, when we drop the material over here that gate should be open and, and the material can be dropped so intermittent uh, discharge of material in a screw conveyor is easily possible for detail you can go through this link now as far as 
capacity of uh, screw conveyor is concerned that we can calculate and it has the empirical relationship. The throughput capacity Q that is kg per second of an screw conveyor depends on a screw diameter that is uh, diameter of the screw is D, lead of the screw that is T. What is lead of the screw is the pitch between the, uh, the pitch between two um, screws or two thread the pitch between two screws or the distance between two screws that we call as the lead of the screw. Speed of rotation that is denoted by n and it is given as rpm. Once we know all these uh, factor, we can define throughput capacity of the conveyor that is equal to c beta pi by 4 d square t n by 60 rho s c f s. Now, rho s over here is the density of material which we have to convey, uh, d, t, n we have already discussed. Now, what is c beta and what is c f s? c beta is a correction factor, we can also call it angle factor or inclination factor which depends on angle of inclination which is beta of the conveyor. So, when we have to transport the material at a proper inclination, uh, we have already discussed. So, when we have to transport the material to a proper uh, inclination, you can see here up to 20 degree, we, uh, up to 20 degree data is shown because, uh, we, because if you remember, we have discussed that through screw conveyor, inclination up to 20 recommended. So, here you see angle vary from 0 to 20 and as and value of c beta when we are considering it is maximum at uh, uh, 0 inclination means it is maximum when we are uh, uh, moving when we are transporting the material horizontally and the value of c beta will keep on decreasing till we move up to 20 degree. So, once the value of c beta decreases if you see this expression value of q decreases because that is proportionate with c beta. So, as angle of inclination increases, uh, throughput capacity will be decreased. Therefore, it can be concluded that when we transport the material in a screw conveyor in an inclination, the throughput capacity of the screw conveyor will be decreased. Further, the coefficient c f which is uh, associated with the expression of q is called as filling coefficient and its value depends on type of material conveyed. So, here we have the table uh, for uh, type of material handled and c f s uh, factor is given other factors are also given that we will discuss and here according to the material value of c f is given. So, for heavy material it is 0.125 uh, value and uh, uh, it can also be concluded that as CFS reduces capacity reduces. So, when we have to transport heavier material the uh, throughput capacity of the conveyor should be less. Further the speed of rotation n of the screw employed depends on type of conveyed material and screw diameter. Its maximum permissible value n max in rpm can be calculated by this expression where c dash is the coefficient and the value of c dash is given over here root over d, d is nothing but the diameter of screw. So, in this way we can calculate capacity which is associated with the screw conveyor as well as the maximum possible rpm uh, we can uh, use in uh, conveying, you, we can use in a screw conveyor as well as the maximum rpm that we can use in screw conveyors. Further, if we need to calculate power consumption in screw conveyors, uh, we have to see what are the resistance offered while moving the material from one place to another place in a screw conveyor. So, you see here the total resistance to the motion of material in a screw conveyor is chiefly made up of the friction of the load on the trough and screw surface. Resistances in intermediate and end bearing that should also be included and the resistance to ascending motion. So, these resistance collectively counted in a 
coefficient and that we call as total coefficient of resistance and that is nothing but capital K T S and which can be determined experimentally. So, the power consumption in a screw conveyor can be calculated can be denoted by this expression that is P equal to Q H plus L K T S into G. Q we know the capacity which we have discussed in previous slides. L is the total horizontal distance where we have to convey the material. L is the horizontal distance where we have to convey the material and H is the vertical displacement of material in meter and G you know already. So, considering this equation we can calculate the power consumption in a screw conveyor. Now, as far as value of KTS is concerned that you can see in the previous uh, slide and that also depends on different material. So, here KTS value increases when we uh, deal the when we go for uh, lighter to heavier material because heavier material will be difficult to transport it will put more resistance to flow and therefore it has more KTS value and therefore power consumption to convey the heavy material would be increased. So, here we have discussed some empirical correlation to calculate capacity to calculate maximum RPM and to calculate power consumption in screw conveyors. Now, we will discuss different type of screw conveyors available. So, as far as screw conveyors are concerned, we have continuous screw as well as band type which we also called as discontinuous screw. Continuous screws are used for conveying granular solids whereas band like and bladed screws are suitable for thorough intermixing of the material during conveying. So, here uh, some schematics uh, are shown for continuous as well as band like. Here you see continuous screw where the screw are um, where the screw are of continuous sheet. On the other hand if you are considering band like screw it means metal sheet are available on its periphery and this. Uh, so, here in band like a screw this metal sheet prepares a ring kind of structure over the shaft and uh, it is attached through these bars to the shaft. So, here if you see this image here we have shown the bend like uh, screw or bend like structure which we also called as discontinuous screw and bladed type of screws are also available. Uh, for more you can visit this link. So, screw conveyor uh, that material is transported from one place to another place at uh, feed and uh, uh, sometime we include the hopper through which feed enters into this and how it discharges the material that we have already discussed. Now, the advantages of uh, screw conveyors are simple design, easy maintenance, compactness requiring little headrooms. So, space requirement will not be very large convenient intermediate unloading that we have already discussed that where we have to unload the material only we have to put gate at the bottom periphery of the casing. Tightness of conveying space which is of special value with dusty hot or odorous material. So, you can see uh, we have tight enclosures sometimes we use semi cylindrical casing but when we deal with dusty or odorous material we can use that we can put that screw in a cylinder complete uh, cylinder so that uh, the material should not be lost along with these advantages there are some disadvantages also such as it has high power consumption substantial rubbing and crushing of the conveyed material because when mat material is uh, dragged from one place to another place whatever size we have put that size can be reduced by uh, continuous sharing or continuous attrition between the particle. So, that is the disadvantage whatever size we want uh, as far as conveying is concerned we should put some higher uh, particle size than whatever we require. High wear on the screw and the trough, load accumulation in the bearing. So, these are some disadvantages for screw conveyors. Now, here we will discuss one small example where 30 ton per hour of heavy material is to be transported by horizontal screw conveyor 
डेंसिटी ऑफ द सॉलिड इज 2000 केजी पर मीटर क्यूब स्पीड ऑफ स्क्रू शेफ्ट इज 35 फाइव आर पी एम वॉट वी हैव टू कैलकुलेट इज द डायमीटर एंड पिच ऑफ द स्क्रू इफ लीड ऑफ द स्क्रू दैट इज स्क्रू पिच डिवाइड बाई डायमीटर ऑफ द स्क्रू इज पॉइंट एट सो वी हैव टू कैलकुलेट द डायमीटर ऑफ पिच कैपेसिटी इज गिवेन टू अस दैट इज थर्टी टन पर आर सो क्यू वैल्यू वी कैन कैलकुलेट ओवर हियर सी बीटा वी हैव टेकन एज वन वाई वन बिकॉज वी आर ट्रांसफरिंग द मटीरियल इन हॉरिजोंटल प्लेन सो एंगल शुड बी जीरो सो सी बीटा इन दैट केस शुड बी वन नाउ एज वी हैव टू ट्रांसपोर्ट द हैवी मटीरियल वेन वी रेफर दिस टेबल फॉर हैवी मटीरियल Uh, we can uh, use uh, cfs value 0.125 so that we have already used over here t by d is given as 0.8 rpm is given as 35 and density as 2000 kg per meter cube putting all values over here you see t would be replaced by t by d so you see t can be replaced by 0.8 into d so while putting all these value over here we can calculate diameter of the A screw which comes as 0.4497 meter, and accordingly the pitch can be found as 0.3598. So you see here we have discussed the screw conveyor, which is very important mechanical conveyor. We have solved one problem. We have discussed its advantage and disadvantage, and uh, other mechanical conveyors like belt conveyor, bucket conveyor. All these we will discuss in next lecture. So that's all for now. Thank you.